Maybe it'll help you. Maybe it won't. You need to judge. Yeah, it need to be so well. Ooh, I put respect on my name. Kina. So lovely. <laughs> and then she rides all the way up and defend herself. You know, they exactly. either watch your lifestyle or learn to live it themselves. It's not nothing that you can prove to them. Like, it's, try Jesus. Try him. Try him. Welcome to Maybe We Can Help, the podcast where we give our unsolicited advice. Maybe it'll help you. Maybe it won't. You be the judge. I am Tasia Royale. Hi, I'm Sheena. I'm Risha. And since these pop the balloons, pop goes the weed little <laughs> stuff <Yeah>. is <laughs> so popular nowadays, Amen. we decided to give our opinion about some of the things that they say on it. Risha, mm-hmm. you had saw one about something. Yeah, so it was one where um, <clears throat> this girl was just explaining what she wants. She's like, I want a man that allow me to be in my soft pop. I was like, well, what? She ain't saying that. Like, uh, and then in the <laughs> caption, it had put soft girl era is lazy. And I'm like, I didn't understand what either or party like really meant by it because it's like okay does soft mean feminine does soft mean lazy what do they mean when they want to be soft like do they just mean they just want to be able to turn their brain off trust their man around their surroundings and you know be able to operate as a woman you know just not really care about whatever but still be a helpmate that's the difference but that's i feel like that's operating in your femininity versus being i don't get it though like that's what i'm saying like i don't know what they mean and that's why we're going to talk about it because the labels have gone too far very much so you guys are labeling everything you're putting titles to stuff that don't even make sense no more <laughs> don't even make so sense. we're gonna talk about this yes amen amen <coughs> we got masculinity we got femininity we got soft girl era kept woman we got kept woman kept man what's we the got... one this one that the men did to counteract soft girl or someone from me. Got energy, right? Oh, no, it's, else. That's right. It I is think it's something, something else. else. I don't know, but it was something to counteract. Was trying I'm to just like, sassy. y'all, like, what's going on <laughs> with the labels? What happened to clear communication? I would like a man that does this. And I want to do this. And I want to do this right. for my man. And understand that when you just give something a label, that is going to have so many definitions by when so I tell you there's billions standards. of people on the planet and everybody has an opinion on it. So basically, I feel like let's take the labels off and get back to of just effective communication. What do you want? I'm in my soft girl era. OK, are you saying that you don't want to work no more? <laughs> right. Are you saying you don't want to <clears throat> think no more? Right. That you just or are you saying that you want to you're trying to get rid of some of your masculine ways are you saying that you want to dress more you want to be more pretty you want to smell good are you saying that you're working on what if they mean lo- like they giving yourself be a better like tone easy. right that's what i was about to say what if they're talking about an inner thing like they just want right. to be soft this is and why nice. you're trying to lay the inner work though that's energy. not nothing a man should be able to provide and this for is you. why labels are harmful right right because, because you, what we that, don't what know mean? what you're talking about right for her to go up there and i, I don't haven't seen the video to be like i want a man to be let me be in my soft girl era right. why didn't you just say i would like a man that would provide um this for me and i do this for him mm-hmm. and i want him to do this and it's you know whatever you right. whatever you mean so they don't have to assume right, right. because he probably popped that balloon thinking his definition <laughs> Of what soft girl meant. And she might not even had that. Or been lazy. She might have been an entrepreneur. But the fact that she said it and he was like, boop. Didn't give her a chance to explain. Yeah. And she was really taken back by it. Like, wait, I can't be soft. So into her mind and what it looked like to the world. Because some people in the caption was like, you know, smart man. But why was he smart? What made him smart about it? He wasn't smart and neither was she. Because neither one of them provided context and nobody had understanding. Right. So basically the whole all of us who are viewers or looking, I haven't seen the video either, Mm -hmm. but everybody who is, you know, outside looking in, it's all making assumptions. And that's all it is. They're making assumptions. She had an assumption about why he popped his balloon. He had an (laughs) assumption about about why he popped the balloon. And everybody else, all the speculators think that yeah i'm with him you don't know what he was thinking you have no, no clue idea he, y'all just way too confident about nothing 
<laughs> in his mind, a soft girl could mean she ain't working, she ain't cooking, she ain't cleaning, she just in bed all day. That could be in his mind. What's all? And or he got people could be like, well, how could he come this, along? How could he um come up with that? Well, how do you come up with your assumption about how she thinks a soft girl is? In her mind, it could be, I just want to be mellow. I'm a chill girl. I like to be in the house. I don't like to do a whole lot of running around in the streets and stuff. That could have been her definition. Right. But neither but one of them know that. Also, with that, you're saying just being mellow, being soft. But does that not come from within? Why does it? personally me i'm just asking why does it have to take a man to bring that out of you like why can't you just be soft and work on yourself self-love and bring that energy within yourself and then when somebody is able to let you continue in that i can understand that but the thing is she might have just went up there to thinking i want a man who supports me being in my self error versus bring it out of me mm-hmm. okay. that's what i'm saying well that's the different <coughs> wordplay would have been exactly different, yeah. that's why it's so important to have effective communication like and you know we we want to label everything as something and you know who's in charge of the definition of these brand new labels that we come out Shereen with einstein out there out real quick you like, know what i'm saying what? and then we all put our own assumption and our own spin on it you know back in the what happened to the webster days where everybody everything had <laughs> one, a, one definition, definition. and that's it you know if you ask somebody what's where is the dictionary ain't nobody gonna hand you a bible because that's their interpretation of what a <laughs> dictionary is we know what a dictionary is right. because it is very it's set in stone this is the definition of a dictionary mm-hmm. and it's just like we have all of these new labels and nobody is stepping up to take charge of what they mean and so like i said we just got a bunch of assuming and that's why you're having so much miscommunication in relationships yeah. mm-hmm. it's creating a yeah. problem it is just because you have creating labels right mm-hmm. but it creates expectations and expectations i saw a video on facebook about how like there was like finances isn't the number one thing of divorce it's <laughs> unspoken expectations and i said oh my god because even if finances you you it was the finances the whole umbrella but the root of it was you expected something from this particular thing to be said or done and it wasn't done or said and then therefore you're disappointed and now you're creating resentment between your partner i said that's absolutely good that's good there. absolutely it's unspoken expectations and when we have those on each other man you you asking for a disaster because you're not telling me what you expect you're not telling me what you want you're not telling me how you feel or what you think you're internalizing it and then you're creating resentment in yourself right there is no communication yeah we have to we have to effectively communicate say what you mean mean what you say that part you know um no no hidden words or agendas and i'm that person i don't um, they will tell you i don't understand none of that you got to come tell me exactly what you mean that's so true mm-hmm. like and they be thinking you know no i actually didn't mm-hmm. i didn't know you know what you did what i do <laughs> You walked by me, and then that when you when you flipped your hair, you was trying to be funny. This is not our scenario. What? I, but just hypothetically speaking, right? Just people, not but us. like because it's a and and then sarcasm mm. is a language I never quite got Shut a hold up. of, and so like I know how to do things jokingly. That's not the same thing as sarcasm. Sarcasm has that underline. I meant it, but I didn't mean it or something it's a weirdness and i be so <clears throat> they speak it fluently they understand because they grew up in a different generation and how to read between the lines we understand right and they be like give like side eye and all that kind of stuff and i i you know I, <sighs> we've been together for so long i can read her energy i know probably exactly what be she be thinking when the situation happens like yep we're just not gonna like that you now, know what I mean? right mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, no. yes and they mm-hmm. can do that however i feel the switch but I don't know what happened. Tay will feel the switch and know what happened and understand. Like, mm-hmm, that she did this. Mm-hmm, that's what happened. And I'd be like, when, where, what, what? I don't, I missed all of it because I don't speak like the same language they be speaking. And so, you know, I just be out here. I feel I just like, here. you know, sarcasm communicating is so prominent in the world because everybody likes it. He, he, they laugh at it. Y'all like, generation. I'm not, it's a lot of people that like it. Older, some people older. I understand the jokingly, and I thought I knew because I could be sarcastic. No, but you're saying but our y'all generation. Know it I to promise it. you, it's old people that be cracking jokes worse than us, and I'd be like, "Dang, that's good. Right? You did that." But but I'm, at the same time, it doesn't make it right. So you can't label it to a generation. <clears throat> it's a worldly thing. 
it's a worldly thing there's those labels that's what i'm saying like she just tried to label i'm like no it's a worldly thing it don't matter the age if you are around it if you've been cultivated if sarcasm has been cultivated in your life it is your thing because it is what you're around your family often spoke plainly right all the time so and for my friends too right right so with my oh, that's a worldly I had to thing. definitely it was out there the you know what i'm saying like that's your like the world like your friends if you're involved like growing up like i said like we saw what we saw and that's what we 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 saw you but it's vi- it's environmental of what you put in you because like you can like joy like she she's really sweet like our niece but she she got sarcastic ways but she be oblivious to certain things too at the same time so it's like how you be, how you be both i don't understand but it's just it's environmental to me like and i was very sarcastic i thank god that he toned it down a whole lot because i realized it can be very painful to people that just don't operate in those type of ways of communicating because it's like why are you doing that but why what's well, funny well you meant it what well, kind of sort of but why you gotta be so sensitive you gotta be so sensitive and it's like well that person not sensitive maybe you just too too rough change your words like it's not gonna kill you but it's so embedded in certain people that it's okay like it's like well you should just take a joke and he he it's not funny all the time like what if it was you what if you felt some type of way then you want somebody to say you know get over it no it's not okay so with communicating with that way you just gotta be careful because i have learned my lesson stopping on a lot of toes being yeah. so sarcastic and dark humor and people think dark humor is so funny which it can make you chuckle dark humor is hilarious. it can make you chuckle i ain't gonna sit there yeah. like i ain't human blow i just kind of i but, i don't really have dark humor with people around oh, me it's normally it. with movies like the stuff you shouldn't laugh at but you do yeah you do that it's funny you do Somebody fall down the stairs and hurt themselves, and y'all like hee hee hee. No, when I I had to learn to not do that, but it, I learned it through Sheena and Pastor because I remember I think I tripped up the stairs and they both came to my rescue. I'm like y'all, I'm okay. You supposed to laugh. I would have laughed. I know, like, but I was used to that. I was used to people laughing first and then saying you okay, you good. Like we did you know? not think it was funny. We want we didn't want her to hurt herself, and that's that. That's how we communicate. Like they both came to my until rescue. Until we like, know you're fragile. okay, it's they ain't not funny. You know, Mari has a little bit of dark humor. Yes, very much so. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of it does. A me and Mari it. can connect on that level. Mari like, definitely does. <laughs> Mari tickles me. I'm like, you laughed at that too. You know, funny. <laughs> Mari definitely. My daughter is a Maria. Mm-hmm. She definitely has, has, has dark that. humor. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I feel like people are lost in the sauce when it comes down to labeling everything and being. And then they put labels and they put their feelings in it, like feelings and labels. Like get out your feelings. Get out them labels. You know, who are you? Who are you? I what think people you? just make it plain. What do you want to be? What you want when you're dating somebody, just say what you want. Mm-hmm. And if they don't want know to what do you that, want. Right. Know, what, know you what, want. what you want. Know what you want. And I think that you cannot know what you want unless you know who you are. That's a fact. That's you know, and so many people really don't know who they are. And they only know the person that they've become due to their environmental circumstances. Mm-hmm. You think you're an angry person, but you're not angry. You live with a lot of people that are hurting and they keep making you angry. And so you've never met you. Like, what are you outside of that? If you were to get all by yourself and not have any, you know, would you be a painter? You know, it's hard for your brain to be creative if you're constantly in survival mode. You know, so Mm -hmm. the gifts that you haven't even discovered and the things. Yes. the, The suppressed emotions, the. Like you ain't never even met you. So and the people that you choose while you're hurting and or traumatized wouldn't are not the same people you would choose when you're healed and whole and love yourself. You would choose a whole different person. You wouldn't even tolerate the people that you have tolerated while you were hurting. So it's important to get to a place where you are healed and whole and love yourself. And you literally can go to a room by yourself and feel good Mm -hmm. and feel like just being creative and what's your next idea and those type of things and that's when you are in a space to choose the right partner for your life because you're not choosing them because you need somebody to do this for you or do that for you or make me happy and you're not putting that pressure on them you know take the label off that's that's a very kind of a little bit selfish if you expect somebody to automatically make you happy in a relationship i mean of course 
you're gonna have uh, amazing times together but the whole weight of your happiness on someone else that's just not fair it shouldn't be that's not True. They should always be adding. They should always be an asset. Yeah. And you should True. always be an asset. You shouldn't want to always think that you should make me happy, and you never want to make them happy. Yeah. You should always want to serve, whether Absolutely. it be a friendship, sistership, relationship. You should strive to be something for someone else, but you got to be something for yourself first. Absolutely. Get to know yourself. Take them labels off. Take the label off. Say what Take you want. Them. Yes. Be effective in your communication. Take and not the in label the attitude. off. Know what you want, even if you need to write it down, so you can make it clear to yourself. Oh, that's a good, a good one. You're making me rock. You're like I was literally just doing this because you're rocking. It's like, oh, I gotta stop, stop rocking. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to stop rocking too. I need to stop rocking. What did you just say? Your last point? I just said that basically, I have no idea. <laughs> oh my God. She was about to say something. No, because I, I had it and then I lost it. Wait, okay. and I was like, oh wait, I don't know what I just. Y'all said. talking about taking the la- labels off and know <coughs> yourself. Know yourself. Yeah, you gotta know yourself first, mm-hmm. and oh, then write, write it down. down. That's what it was. That's write good. down what you want in a partner. Look it over mm-hmm. and say, okay, because as some of y'all, oh, I wrote that list last when year. you write your list, I need you to figure out how many of these things can you apply to you. Amen. You know, are you any of those things? I want someone who's financially stable. Are you? My God. I want someone who is an effective communicator. Are you? Do you hide behind things? Mm -hmm. Do you say half of what you mean and then be angry? Do you expect them to be a mind reader? You know, and you stomp around the house and you angry because they couldn't read your mind today. Because that's not effective communication at all. Mm -hmm. They might not have a clue what you are upset about and you think you know what you did (laughs) and they're like i really don't and you believe so wholeheartedly that they know that you know you just right and if you have a person in your life that truly loves you they want to know they want to like fix it they want to be like well what is it where did we go wrong can we make it better what can i do to make it better that's but you have to communicate that and they have to you have to know that that person loves you to be able to even accept that absolutely and that can be hard to do because sometimes you know learning to say to yourself this person loves me i don't know why that's so difficult i think because they're 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 seeing people's actions through opposite filters Mm -hmm. they've been hurt so much it's like you don't love me for real like this is ulterior motive i Jesus. don't know this is something i ain't never seen this before because so many people have burnt them or they can't trust anybody because they've been burnt so much so every time somebody comes it does good thing what you want in it like in return because yeah, ain't nobody this is. nice you know what i'm saying so they're kind of seeing things through those eyes of pain and mistrust and all of those things and most of the time when you have experienced a lot of those people it's because that was what was in you and so in turn you get around somebody and you're like i don't know why i'm just comfortable around this person and then that person is lying to you they're burning you they're doing this they're doing that they're doing it what in you have to ask yourself what in me made me comfortable around that type of spirit Mm. around this type of person and sometimes it's not necessarily you attracted a liar because you're a liar you attracted a liar because you don't love yourself and so when someone lies to you you don't make excuses for them you will not basically you don't raise a, a standard for your own self or you know you attract a narcissist because You'll let them get away with all kinds of stuff. Right, and you, you don't trust, right? You don't trust yourself. So if, if you're telling yourself, nah, something ain't right, and but you'll still stay because, well, he might do this. He might get it right. He might, it, it just might, you know. No, if somebody shows you who they are, believe, believe them. them. Believe them. Okay. And, you know, <laughs> not just sit there and be like, oh, well, you know. Try to coddle it and try to try right. to, try to cultivate mess. Right. You can't cultivate mess. He got to get it out of him. That's right. She got to get it out of him. Absolutely. Because you don't love yourself enough <laughs> Dude, to leave them alone. Think out by yourself sometimes. Like, when it's like work on yourself in your singlehood, that is a whole journey. But you got to be willing to and, and love it, though. Because once you do it, it's like, okay, when the Lord's in you, you know. First you supposed to be with you like, all right, well, I did this work for a reason, you know. Now, exactly. like, but 
it makes it's not sense. in vain right I about to say it makes sense and not only that is you help you can help so many more you can help so many more it's not even just for getting what you want from god is you can help so many more once you're able to help yourself and telling people you know effectively what you want or what you expect or what you think or what you feel those things matter i ain't never know how much it mattered until i was able just to start releasing and anything i'd be trying to internalize i go ahead and try to get it out because i don't want it to linger i don't want it to take root in my mind but you gotta you know so how do you guys effectively communicate what you want and not sound you know (laughs) why we both start doing that like i'm trying to find a good word but you know the sound it's not sound needy or maybe or like you know i ask questions i think i do mm-hmm. like i ask questions like well if it's something that i kind of want i'm like well how do you feel about this or what if or hypothetically like i try to put in scenarios. scenarios right i put in scenarios but then i'm like okay well this isn't third like i'll put me in it then you know what i'm saying i'll put me in it once i see how you react to see if i could go there with you or state something that i may want or think should happen and we go from there you <clears throat> i just say it <laughs> <laughs> i think my fear is well not a fear but it's uh, like a reservation of it y'all know me i'm gonna just say i don't i, I like this i don't like this you shouldn't do that or you sh- I, I like that you know it's just i'm gonna just say what i really feel mm-hmm. how about you tay that's what she does. She's not literally not. answering by doing what. Yeah, she just go along with it, even if she don't like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I have learned. Re- mm, excuse me. I have learned recently that if I write it down, I feel better about it. I write it down and then go from there. We're gonna work on writing it down and then saying it to the person, because that's how things mm-hmm. get fixed and solved. Yeah. Because that piece of paper can't solve it for you. Mm-hmm. But we gonna work. We gonna get there. I told her she could practice on me all day. I feel like my energy speak from my mouth. Do sometimes not like that. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. and I'd be like, God, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, because it's like you got. I'd be quiet, but still my energy speak before my mouth do, and I'd be like, Give me a second, like give me a second. I gotta process get my it. energy together. Yeah, it's like give me a second, give me a second. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing right now, because I, I I don't know where it's gonna go. Like I'm still harnessing my own self every day you know what i'm saying which everybody should work on self-control and not trying to suck the life out of a room without knowing it <clears throat> so i think that's yeah so your effective communication could can be your energy it can be and i think like with this like he'll i'll get quiet and like i think and that is speech know. yeah and it's like you know you good you know you over there you got quiet you thinking I'm like, I am thinking, like, would you care to share? Yeah. And I do. I do. I tell them, but I just, it. it I got to make sure I'm not going to be err or, you know, I don't just be just trying to find a new norm, find a new norm. That's all of communicating and, and finding how we can communicate. That's good. We. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to to learn who you're talking to. And how they communicate, yeah. because I mean, if you if you were talking to a friend and they were Spanish, you'd have to learn some of their language in order to li- to effectively communicate with that person. And even though we all speak English, none of us speak the same language, because we are all um, basically communicating through our experiences and our upbringings and you know all kinds of stuff. But you know, it's girls. I used to. I remember going into a place and all the girls, they was, you know, affectionately calling each other bees. My Lord. And, you know what I'm saying? And one of them came out, girl, bee, you you are gorgeous. And I was like, don't call me that. (laughs) Effectively communicating. Respectfully. Respect, yes. Respectfully. Don't Don't call me that. That's what we do. I understand that. But. Don't call me that though. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can do that somewhere. And else. that will that's offensive to some people and they just like you need to calm down. You need to well. you Now that young lady particularly did not. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I understand that. Respect. And that is maturity. Some girls be like, well, 
you know, forget her. They go over talk. She's talking. She's gonna tell me not to call her B. B. You know, all behind your back, being petty. She did not. She was very respectful. I don't know what she did when I left, <laughs> but I felt respected at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't mean no harm. I just that's not where I come from. That's where you come from, though. Mm-hmm. And I don't see nothing, you know, wrong about how you decide to communicate with each other. But as for me in my house. Don't do that. Don't do that. Some respect you know, that. and I respect people's boundaries. And so, therefore, I'm not afraid to give you the opportunity to respect mine. Mm. So I think that's what it is. Tay is afraid to give people the opportunity, but we curse that from the root. You need to give people the opportunity because you won't know what they're made of. I, I know I don't trust. I don't trust it. I try it on me. You should know me by now. I like I like you I, did. I, I did one time. You did. I was I so did. proud. I Risha, you won't dare. But I was doing something, and you know I can get distracted when I do hair sometimes. I got a little ADHD, but it's all right. And so I was talking, and I was doing something. And you know, if I talk, sometimes I'll stop. Mm-hmm. Tay says, Sheena. You got to get back to work. I, I, don't I said, what Sheena, said. focus. Yes, focus. And that was a step for her because usually she'll just take it, sit around. I'll just wait because I did what I know. I know what you would pick up on. Mm-hmm. I was like, I start cleaning up. I start getting my stuff together. I was like, all right, she's going to pick up on these cues. And it had to be the Holy Spirit. Like, she's not going to pick up on these cues. You're going to have to tell her. Yep. And I was just like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she did it. And she did it, great. and then I and I was like, I am, and then but I remember who it was, and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, you're right, and I got back on task, easy, easy peasy. She hit me with the I am real quick and go back to watching TV, <laughs> right? Because but you already know that I, I that I, I'll 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 get it together, but with Tay, she's testing the, so I knew to make sure, and that's the thing, like if I test you and you fail, I'm just like, well, <laughs> won't do that again. <laughs> You won't get that out of me. Exactly. No, and so I, I said, to okay. Holy Spirit that, I, I to let her know that. Sure, she knew. I heard you, and I'm listening. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm that gonna. Yeah. I will shut all the way back. square one because <laughs> <laughs> you won't do that to me again, no, ma'am. Mm-mm. Yeah. So you and that was that was good. Mm-hmm. It was easy, you know, and it worked. The Lord. <laughs> Thank it worked. you, Lord. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I feel like you know. You did good. Thank you, Absolutely. Lord. Absolutely. You that did good, awesome. and you should do it more often because I'm not going to be offended. She did it twice. I'm wrong because mm-hmm. we was in, uh, we was about to go somewhere, mm-hmm. and I said, Tay, <clears throat> do you feel like driving? Oh, yeah. And um, usually she would say, yes, just because I asked. And she said, reluctantly, if I'm being honest, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to drive. I said, I'm proud of you. I'm glad you said that. I, it's no That's problem. Awesome. I'll do it. And you know, and it it it, it was no switching, well, no energy, nothing. She just because it's it's fine. You know, mm. you gotta. I, it's okay for you to say no. Because I think I my emotions are me. Like I keep them so to myself. So if I am honest with you with my emotions or something that I feel that I hold dear, and you mistreat them, you can't be trusted anymore with that. And trust for me is, I think I, is extremely valuable, more valuable than what I thought it was. And once it's broken, it's just like, well, I don't know how you're going to get back. Right. Mm. And that is. And some people weigh it a little, like you give a little bit more grace. And I pray that I do learn to give a little bit more grace in that. But once it, like, that's what causes me to shut down. Because you have, not you in general. Because you only got one time. You only have one time. And I'm just like. It shouldn't be that way with, no. for, with people, oh, no. and I have to. I do understand that it's a me that I have to work on mm-hmm. with that. But it's it, it's challenging to give someone a chance once I've known, I've saw what you are capable of. So why would I give you another chance? I know there's people out there that think the same way, but that's not okay. It's not. It's not. Okay. It's not because I mean I can't even tell you how many people that I trust now and that are dear friends now that broke my trust over and over and over. But they, I knew that they were working on it. You know, I knew that they were going to, that they were eventually going to get there and, you know, they need the chance. And most of the time, most people, I know a lot of people think like you, you know, you got one time and then that's it. And then, you know, I can just kind of avoid you be associates. It's dangerous with me though, because I don't have to avoid you. I will be your best friend. Well, not really your best friend. I will be your friend and not trust you at all. Tell you, trust me, man. Think about it. I want to know. 
because I'm not around as much. I I I don't think you've ever given me a reason not to trust you. Mm-hmm. Out of 18 years of friendship, you made her mad, but yeah, not that's broke not, his trust. But there's a difference between. Yeah, I mean, we mm-hmm. making me mad, mad is different. Is different. Yeah. Than breaking my trust. I don't think you've ever broken. But that was my sad trust. though. How you told me the other day when I used to do my lash, my eyes closed, y'all. And Tay was like, I was reaching for my phone with my eyes closed, and Tay said, <laughs> "You're not gonna be able to reach it." Where it's at, I'm letting you know. My eyes are closed, y'all. I'm instead of reaching back to find my phone with my eyes closed, my best friend's telling me, "You're not gonna be able to reach it, Risha." And I said, "Yes, I am." And I looked. I was like, "Oh, okay." She's like, "You didn't trust me." And I said, "God help me and my unbelief, because that's not just with her, and it's not a her Everybody. thing." Everybody, I'm she, a, I'm gonna see for myself, right? That's, that's, yes, yeah. that's yeah, right. It's a thing. It's a it's a it's a challenger in me. I don't know what that is, but I know the Lord gonna work it for my good. Because the enemy tried to make it for my bad, but I know God is gonna use it for my good because He didn't just have it in me for a reason. But either way, I was like, Lord, but I don't want to be like I don't trust my family and my friends because well, y'all because like. I do trust you. I was just like, maybe I don't. But I don't know. It was like, I, clearly, I, it was just evident that my eyes were closed. Like, yeah. why would you not believe you, me? You could tell, Reese, they chopping off fingers over there. Where? And and then <laughs> four, the, four missing fingers later, she going to come back. Girl, they chopping <laughs> off fingers over there. <laughs> yes, I told you. They were chopping off fingers <laughs> over there. <laughs> it's bad because I've been a see it to believe it type of girl all my life. Like, my mom, I'll be like, why are you always asking why? I've always been a why person, too. Like, why? That's the one thing about my communication. I'm going to ask why, but why? You telling me to do this? Why? You telling me this is what? Why? Like, I want to know why. And I was like, I help my kids because they're going to ask me why. It's just a thing. Cause, I don't know. I've just been always curious. It's like, why? But why? And my mom, because I said so, but why? I'm good. I make straight A's. No, I didn't. But I make good grades. I didn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> she corrected. I did. I, I can't lie to y'all like that. No, I didn't. I, I, I can't lie to y'all like that. I passed. I passed. <laughs> but I had good grades. I did stuff at the house. And I only had one friend, which was Tay. So when she told me that Tay couldn't come over sometimes, I was like, oh, but why? I don't do nothing, mama. I don't go nowhere. I don't ask you to do nothing. But why? I can't have one friend over. I don't feel like having company. She ain't your company, mom. Why? This is the argument. Literally, it was the, the well, mom, boy, let me tell you something. But she never got, she never got to the point. She always gave in, though. Because she knew it was right. I'm like, mama, you just being mean. You don't want nobody around you. And she, like, and honestly, I picked up on that trait as an adult. You don't want nobody around because you don't want nobody around. But why? Why are you like that? You have people that love you, that want to be around you, that want to put their presence in yours and yours in theirs. Why are you like that? That is not okay. And I had to realize that. But communicating that type of way built that in me. But, hey, those are generational curses that are, are dead. In broken, Jesus name. broken. 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 Pieces Jesus on the floor. Broken. But, yes, <clears throat> Tay. <laughs> That you you want you gonna break that you gonna break that yeah I'm gonna have to I mean, yeah and then I do understand <coughs> I'm gonna have to if it's a very you've never practiced place. forgiveness because she used to hold grudges I did and then you didn't have to get it back together because you know how to be nice to someone and I I don't I don't actually forgive you I still know it's there I That's still correct. know what, I still know what you did last summer <laughs> but uh <laughs> but and and the thing is it's just like. They're never, they're not, they, they're they not back in and they don't even know it. Yeah, that's exactly what I used to have the ability to do. Yes, but mm-hmm. you want to, you want people to stay in. And it's just like, even if you make a mistake, um, it's okay. I don't like it. And I might be upset for a few days. Mm. And, you know, I even told Risha recently, I was like, you know, I'm still upset with you. Mm-hmm. And um, but it means, and I think that, and I would see. I would tell Risha that I wouldn't tell you that. I would just work on it until I've never had that circumstance with you. But I would just work on it until it's gone. Because for me, um, like for those of you who don't know how, and you have a problem like Tay, and it's one time and one and done. What I have to do is. I have to tell myself all the things that this person has done or um, the memories that I have with them and like the good stuff. Because when you're like Tay, a lot of times the good things are pushed to the back or to the side so that you can pile up all the bad things in the middle because that way 
it helps your agenda. That is true. And so, no, this if this person was all bad, God wouldn't have put them in your life. Mm-hmm. If they weren't for your good, God wouldn't have put them in your life. You know, now it's one thing if y'all, those of you out there uh, equally yoked. who don't know if God told you one way or the other, you ain't never Your had part. no confirmation. He might have been sent by Satan. Okay. Himself. You got to identify them first. Okay. That part. <laughs> that, <laughs> identify them first. Yes. And then after you have identified them. Who is in your life. Right. Then you have to identify you and the things in you that are stopping you from believing what God said about them. And then whether they're perfect or not. And then you work on those things and you constantly remind yourself, but they're there. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that they love me reluctantly? Even if you have to say it reluctantly, the answer should be yes. I do believe they love me. Do you believe that they do anything for you? you? Yeah, I believe that. Do you believe God sent them? Yeah, I believe that. Okay, that's a start. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a start to completing this puzzle that is this imperfect person and helping them to find their place in your heart where they belong they belong there they belong in your heart if god gave you a friend if god gave you a husband if god gave you a child you know then those people belong in your heart and you don't want to be closed down you don't want to be shut down to love because it's the greatest thing that you could ever have i remember this person saying on the podcast or saying somewhere he said i've as he's he said he's been a preacher for a long time and he sat by a many a bedside while people took their last breath and nobody ever asked could you pull up my bank account so can i can see it one more time rewards my can medals. you bring me yes bring can you bring my that. medals so i can see them one more time all the stuff that i achieved they always want to see the people that they shared life with the people that were there, right, wrong, up, down, whatever, those are the people they want to see. And so that tells you that deep down inside, you know what's more important in life. And mm-hmm. it's love and the people that we share love with. True. That's true. That's good. You can take face. I'm just listening and absorbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's you got to tell yourself the truth because the enemy, he goes around tearing up houses with lies Amen. and the bible says that a um what is it the foolish wife the foolish tears wife down her own house tear down <laughs> her house with her own hands <laughs> my god her own hands these hands right here that you could build with but you use it to take apart the bricks mm-hmm. brick by brick you break that house down and you don't want to do that mm-hmm. you want to build it put the brick up you might get a little weary and need a break but keep building. Amen. Doing the good work. Yes. Why should you come down? Okay. Is that Nehemiah, right? Yes. Nehemiah, yes. Mm-hmm. I haven't read that story for myself. Amen. That's I have. That's why I named though. my son Nehemiah. You know. Yeah, y'all took all the Bible names. We ain't going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I got one in Spanish, though. Can't tell you why. Oh, don't tell them. You can tell me. Enrique. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> you can tell me. She's gonna tell me later. Y'all don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. This has been a lovely conversation. Mm-hmm. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you take the labels off. I hope you learn to communicate. I hope you learn not to hold grudges and uh give people Man, a chance. Say what you want. Me. Give people several chances because they're gonna need them. If any person chances. you love, they're gonna mess up. <laughs> several chances. And I think another real quick before we go, I don't give myself that either. Right. It's either you're going to go all full force and do it, or you're not going to do it at all. Because why would you? You can't give to somebody what you haven't given to you. So, yeah. I'm gonna work on that. Work on you. Give, on, give you grace. Give you grace. Amen. So you can give it to somebody else. Amen. That is mm-hmm. that part. Amen. Good. Let the church say. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh y'all right, part. though. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I was coming in. That's all right. <laughs> I am Tej Royale. I'm Sheena. I'm Risha. And y'all please like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you know when another episode has posted. This has been another episode of Maybe We Can Help. We will see you next time. Y'all have a good one. Bye. Bye.